Hey everybody, welcome back. We got another Tech Biz tutorial here. This is for graphic design class. We've been working on the design process and we're making a logo using initials, using our initials. For the demonstration uh, that I'm going to be giving you, the initials I'm using are, are from our uh, school district, NP. And so I'm going to kind of uh, continue on from the sketches I showed you, but your your project will be initials of your first and last name uh, when you make these. And we're going to look at how you can do this with Photoshop and also uh, how to use some other kind of tools as well. Um, so your everybody's logo is going to be a little bit different, but hopefully this will kind of give you some ideas of how I am using this program to uh, make this this final product of a digital file of the logo. Usually we'd be using Illustrator or we would want to be using a vector program uh, for logos but since most of the things we're going to be doing in this introductory class are going to be used with uh, Photoshop uh, it's just easier to uh, kind of get really good with this program then when you get to advanced graphic design then you get to start using Illustrator in that class so uh, without putting this off any further we'll go ahead and get started I'm gonna go to uh, create new and for this one we should probably go four inches by four inches or five inches by five inches um, you know for just to kind of keep everything consistent and so I'm going four by four resolution 72 and um, yeah we should be we should be good with that alright so then I'll click create and we got our canvas control plus zooms in control minus zooms out uh, I wanna use my type tool here and I want to type in the letter N for North, North Platte. And I'm, like I said, I'm trying to do a little re imaging of our school district's logo uh, just for something fun to do. Alright, so I got the letter N there. Uh, now I'm going to use my type tool again and I want to type in the letter P. Alright, control T allows me to resize this. So that kind of helps out. And I want this to be probably fairly close to the same width I'm just kind of eyeballing it here of how I want this uh, to look later. Alright, and here we go. So this here is kind of the letters that I want to use with this. And probably what I think would be the best way for me to do this next would be to you uh, rasterize so I can edit the pixels of this letter P here. I'm going to move my cursor over to the layers panel and right click and go to rasterize type. Then I can go to my tools on the left hand side and go to polygon lasso tool. And with that I want to select right along this portion of this letter. Alright, and I have that selected, then I'm going to press delete. And then control D to deselect. I still got some kind of, I don't know what you, what you call it, um, ghost pixels there where I kind of missed what I was trying to select. So I'm going to reselect that part and delete that, and then I want to do the same thing down here. Alright, now I got those done. So I can use the move tool uh, to move this around. 
until I kind of get this where I want it to be. Uh, probably about right here, I suppose. Uh, I like it down. I'm going to go right here, and then I also want to kind of use my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to control T, oops, and here I want to um, let me think how I want to do this. Okay, zoom in in here, control T, and by holding shift I can just kind of drag that over to the side that looks looks decent for what we're doing here alright so uh, these two images I will now um, rasterize both of them and then I want to merge the layers alright I'm gonna control T this to kinda resize this a little bit so the so it's kind of in the center of my square and looks all right. And then what I want to do is I'm actually going to control select this layer, make a new layer. I'm going to keep that original version, but I'm making it invisible. And now on this new layer one, with that selected still, I can use shift backspace and go here to color and I'm going to choose a blue color to fill that in alright so that's right there then I can double click on this layer one to my layer style and I want to go here to stroke and I could go three or two either ways would probably be okay maybe two's a little bit better and then I'm gonna click OK and I have my basic logo uh, that I kinda came up with you can look back and see which sketch uh, that it kinda matched with uh, the last thing that couple things here when you go to save as uh, you'll save this as a PSD alright uh, and that's gonna keep it as a project file so you can go back and make any changes to your layers uh, the other thing that you're gonna do is you're going to make this background layer invisible by clicking the eyeball there and then I'm gonna save this as a PNG and a PNG allows this checkered place of the logo to be transparent so if I put this logo on a black web page I'm not gonna have a white square around my logo it's it's gonna fill in with you know whatever the background is gonna be showing where the checkered is so the PNG file for these logos is very important and uh, having that background transparent because when we get to our branding guides and creating our our brand for our logos and creating stationary and promotional items it's gonna be a lot easier if we don't have to worry about that white square around the outside of these so uh, make sure you go up to file save as and then as the file type you save it as a PNG uh, and also a PSD alright so that's the first way that I wanted to uh, kinda show you how to make a logo now some of you may be working on this at home and you might not have access to Photoshop at home alright or, or any of our tools you can download uh, like paint.net or GIMP or any of those kind of free programs but if you don't have access uh, to those or you don't have the hard drive space or whatever I did find this uh, program called vector.com v-e-c-t-r dot com and this is a browser based uh, graphic editing program and 
Uh, it's it will help you to make some things that that are okay for this and you can make some effective graphics if if this is like an emergency situation you know so uh, when you get here and you get to vector.com uh, I'm gonna use another one of my sketches we are a little limited on the tools we can use for this but here we go this uh, uh, button here that says use online I'm gonna click there you can create your own account uh, if you wish as well but I'm going to use online alright and it's in some ways it's similar you know to the things we've been working on all, all of these graphic editing programs are similar uh, on the bottom right hand corner I guess uh, there's our zoom so I'm just gonna zoom out to 100 percent and I want to I had one of the sketches that had like the circle with the letters in it right so I'm going to use my ellipse tool and if I hold shift and click and drag it will draw the ellipse okay um, if I hold shift while I drag it it will keep it scaled if I don't hold shift it will uh, make it you know like an actual ellipse or an oval uh, shape instead of being a perfect circle all right once it's there then I can go up here to uh, background and I can change the color of of my ellipse all right and then I can also change the border of this so uh, for the border I'm I'm actually going to highlight this value down here and copy it so that when I do my letters it's going to match in there alright uh, so that looks pretty good and for this I may change this later after looking at that that color is fairly ugly so I'm gonna actually choose a different one and then I'm gonna select that and copy that one alright okay uh, for now I just have that as a 20 pixel center alright I may change it in a little bit alright now I'm gonna go here to my text tool you'll notice there's the pencil tools and all that other stuff too alright but I can go here to my type tool and I'm gonna type in NP alright and once I have that selected oops. then I can click and drag this here alright and then I want to make sure if I look over here uh, I want to change the background color of this from gray I want to select there and go control V to paste it and then I press enter and then my text is in here all right so that's there all right and then uh, for the border I don't want a border around my letters maybe you do I don't in this case all right and then I want to go here and I want to uh, select the actual font style I double clicked here to make sure I had the text selected and there are a ton of different uh, typefaces with all of these um, when I was looking at this earlier for this example I found one I liked and of course now I didn't write it down but I'm pretty sure yeah it's audio wide I was like, I'm pretty sure it starts with the letter A alright so uh, there's my letters for that so I'm gonna put those in the middle of my circle and kind of get it centered as best as possible you can right click and go to align and uh, change the alignment of these uh, and then I'm gonna reselect my circle here and I want to change the border size of this because I'm actually just trying to make this border be roughly the same size as 
the letters all right and there we go so this is my other uh, logo so this one here is obviously a little bit simpler of a style but using your shapes and it has everything is layers up here so there's a layer for my text there's a layer for my ellipse uh, you have your pen tool uh, you can add other shapes to these as well uh, that you put in there so you can kind of play around the, with this and you can make some decent uh, simple graphics all right and they, and they would be perfectly acceptable for uh, these projects especially if you're uh, stuck home sick or whatever and you're and you're still trying to keep up on your work and you don't uh, have access to Photoshop uh, when you're done they have the file settings and everything here but uh, what you can do is you can go to export and you can decide what the size of this is going to be alright and you can decide here if you want it to be a SVG which is a vector graphic in this case or a PNG just like we did with the Photoshop uh, or a JPEG okay and then they also give you a little shared URL then you can download this file uh, to your computer and then you'd be able to turn it in to me uh, either as an attachment or to the Google Classroom so again that's a couple of different ways where you can kind of play around uh, with some of our digital tools uh, Photoshop if you're at school you know uh, or this vector.com if you're at home without access to Photoshop and that will help you to hopefully come up with uh, some ways to cr uh, to turn your sketches that you made of your logo into a digital product uh, once you have that done then you'll email those to me like I said and then you just need to email me a five to seven sentence reflection tell me what you learned you know tell me about how uh, we talked about the design process talk about how we looked at examples of logos with the logo games and came up with what makes an effective logo and then talk about how you sketch different examples and you got feedback from your friends or your family or from your classmates or uh, from myself and then the last step was to create this and talk about the tools you used what do you like about your logo what don't you like what would you do differently uh, so include all those things in your reflection uh, because that's showing me the growth process uh, that you went through uh, in order to just walk in the door of graphic design and now creating our first design. As always, let me know if you have any questions and uh, thanks for watching. I'm excited to see the logos you all come up with.